Hey now, I'm Evan Palmer. Thanks for tuning in. Recently, I sat down with Gavin Wallace Aylesworth, drummer for the band Bent Knee. And I realized that probably many of you have never even heard of Bent Knee. So I thought I would roll a clip from their video for one of their songs called Being Human, just to give you a taste. The sheer talent and creativity of these guys, well, <clears throat> I think you're gonna agree that you have just discovered something quite amazing. I imagine your dead body lying in my bed And I know the details why you had to go You never liked the thought of being human anyway Death is one more option to explore Welcome back, I'm Evan Palmer, and today in the spotlight we have Gavin Wallace Aylesworth, drummer with Inside Out recording artist Bent Knee. Gavin, thanks hey. so much for taking a few minutes to sit down today thanks in the for spotlight. Having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank, you. thank you. So just another band out of Boston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but you're a, a Bay Area guy. Mm -hmm. um, you went to Berkeley School of Music yeah. in Boston. Is that where the band came together? Yes, yeah, that's where we all met. Um, uh, Courtney and Ben met first, uh, and they started writing together, and initially it was going to be just the two of them, and it uh, kind of opened up, and more and more people came in, and, and you know, there were some lineup changes, and now we're, we're kind of at the six piece that, that we're at now. So how did they find you? How, well, uh, was it a flyer with the tear strip with the phone number? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew uh, Ben and Vince uh, from because we, we we were all the, the same. We entered at the same semester, okay, uh, for Berkeley, which was fall of two thousand and seven, uh, and I knew both of them. And uh, Courtney had come in. Uh, I think it was the year after, um, but I was already playing with with Ben and. You know, hanging out, and one day I got a Facebook message saying, "Hey, uh, Bent Knee, who I had seen uh, a show in the cafeteria of the dorm building that, uh, that that we all lived in. I saw Bent Knee play there, and uh, I got a Facebook message from Ben saying, "Hey, uh, do you want to play drums for Bent Knee? We record the first album in two weeks, oh, nice. and there's there's <laughs> you know there's there's a couple shows, and I said, okay, sure, and, you know, here I am. Yeah. One thing led to another. Yeah, and then uh, you know we we. Once, once the group opened, or once the group uh, became the six of us, uh, we all started writing together. Uh, so the, the, you know, direction of the band kind of changed. And, yeah. yeah. I think it's appropriate to ask you, how would you describe the music <laughs> for anybody, any of our yeah. listeners, our viewers who haven't heard you? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm notoriously bad. I think we all are notoriously bad at, at describing our our own sound. Um, now you know I have my own. That's true. Of it. Yeah, that's true. I, I heavy liquid mood rock. Yes, that was mine. I like that <laughs> heavy liquid mood rock. I said I like you could take it if you, if you want. That's a good one. That's a good one. I remember the the very first bent knee business cards had dystopian post pop on them, and that was that was before the first album. Uh, wow, that was before I, the first album. Wow. Yeah, dystopian <laughs> post pop. That takes me back. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. So we've, uh, uh, but you know, we've been called everything from uh, uh, like progressive rock to art rock to experimental yeah. to you know. You are definitely all of that. I think, and it's and absolutely a compliment. I have had the the um, good fortune to see you guys live a couple a couple of times, and there's something that is. I mean, you come away with yes, the the music is truly original. Okay. It's, it's like nothing you've ever heard before. And it's even more than that. It's more innovative than that. Because there's one element that, in my mind, it sets you apart as a group from everybody else I've heard. And that is, 
you have brought the producer engineer position into the band on stage with you. Yeah. And so I, I want to ask you how that happened, but before you answer that question, <laughs> let me just set it up for, for our viewers and listeners. When you're out in the crowd and you're listening to Bent Knee perform, what happens if, if you were to strike the drum, if you strike the snare, what happens is the sound of the snare goes through a microphone, it gets sent out to the mixing console, the front of the house as they call it, and then I hear it as the listener through the main speakers. But it's different for Bent Knee. When Gavin strikes a drum, the sound comes out of the microphone and it goes to Vince, who's on stage with you, who can then have, the, he has the ability to change the sound if he wants to and yeah. then send it out to the front of the house. So it gives you the ability, and as I'm listening to you play a song, I'll hear the snare. Nice, it sounds like a snare. And then it might re the song might reach a dramatic crescendo, and all of a sudden you hit the drum and it sounds like a cannon. <laughs> and I, I am completely godsmacked, because I don't know where did that come from. I'm not used to hearing the ability to change sounds from what I was just hearing 10 seconds ago. How did you ever come up with the concept of adding, and, and Vince is that person oh, for yeah. you. Yeah, that's Vince, yeah. How did, how did that all happen? How did Vince become a part of the performing act? Well, it was, um, as I understand it, because Vince uh, was there you know, when I uh, uh, showed up in, yeah. in, in the group. Um, it started from, uh, uh, you know, I'm actually trying to I'm trying to remember how exactly that started. Uh, I, I think it was just because you know Vince has always loved mixing. That that was what he you know went to. That was his major in Berkeley, the the MP and E music production and engineering okay. uh, major. Um, and I think just a lot of bands on record will have you know the vocals have weird effects and, and things like that. But a lot of bands don't. Get to replicate that on stage. I've never heard it live, and I think it just came from a want of seeing a band that that could do that. And, and so he, uh, the way that our rig works is that Courtney's vocal mic runs into his rig. Okay. So yeah. um, even in the moments where like you know you're hearing my snare going through his echoes, that's all coming from that that one vocal mic. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And he also uh, he also plays uh, synth parts. Uh, as well, um, so he's he's got he has a, a a board with his laptop and he's got a keyboard and and he's, he runs a guitar through his uh, rig now too, um, as well as controlling Courtney's vocals. So he's he's quite the busy uh, you know the busy guy on stage. I would bet <laughs> that we're going to hear a lot more bands taking this lead and and incorporating that because it, it makes it so dynamic and I would not want to be the band following you on stage. <laughs> there's no way that anybody can get, I mean, material aside, there's no way anybody can, can get that sound as big as you guys have it live. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it, you're already such a, a hugely successful act right now, but we know that there's going to come a day when all of a sudden tens of thousands of fans turn into millions of fans <laughs> virtually wow. overnight, right? Yeah. And some blogger is going to say, oh, bet me the overnight sensation. <laughs> 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 and you're, and you're going to laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you know differently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that, that um, impresses me so much, uh, viewing from afar, uh, of, of your your progression as a band is how you all have been able to stay together mm. and to embrace the grind that that business is. Can you just give us a sense for how how do you make that happen? How do you all stay on the same page with the same goal and with all that life throws at you for distractions and keep that at bay while you all focus on a common goal that is so unusual today. it's it's taken a lot of it, it's 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 taken a lot of work you know um, because I mean we're we're very much a family but you know families still argue and families have differences of opinion and and 
you know, uh, generally about once or twice a year we'll have kind of a big meeting about our goals for the year. Um, it's a it's a big undertaking. Yeah, and, know? and I suppose it's it's kind of a thing that we, I guess, also consciously kind of don't know how we, but it, it I, yeah. So you're not self-analyzing all the time. Not all the time. <laughs> not all the time. I, I, I will say that, you know, I, I, we have learned uh, how to tour, I think, in a way that's very sustainable for, okay. for all of us in terms of, you know, because touring is a very hyper-social thing. Yes. And all of us in the band have varying degrees of social uh, uh, quotas, I guess. Okay. You know, um... So we, we've learned how much space we kind of need to, to give each other and, and how, you know, active we can be uh, in terms of, like, you know, uh, doing things during, you know, break time or, or, or something like that. And I think that helps for the longevity. We're also not a very big party band, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, helps with... Uh, keeping goals and, and eliminating distractions <laughs> yeah yeah sure. and, and we also um, staying healthy yeah yeah uh, and, and we also I think we also just like constantly having new things to play and new things to do so I, I think that's yeah. something that all six of us have that kind of helps fuel us uh, to, to keep writing new albums and keep making new things well you said the word family and that um, that's something that makes a whole lot of sense hmm. that if if you're gonna be spending years on end and, and quality time with people you got to get along oh yeah you know oh, yeah otherwise it's gonna fall apart yeah and, yeah and let's face it if, if people are dropping off you're not gonna have unity and it's gonna show up in the sound exactly yeah so yeah staying together at all costs I guess yeah and, and it's also I mean this band is, is a very even six way split of like input and and uh, you know everyone is just as important as the next member you know oh, so it's, that's, it's I'm so glad you hit on that yeah and, and I think that that's something that a lot of bands can fall victim to especially yes. in, in like the writing yep. or something if you know if uh, uh, well look at the Beatles, right? You right. Know, like, right. John Lennon wrote this hit, and, you know, Paul McCartney wrote that hit, and, and, and things right. like that, and I think that kind of, you know, if my Beatles history is correct, I know it is for Kiss, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of animosity between members for the various rights of songs, and, and you know, Peter Chris wrote and sang Beth, and, you know, made a lot of money, and there was resentment and jealousy, and, you know, yeah. we're just even six-way split, because in, in the writing room, we're all pitching in ideas, and we're all throwing stuff around. And... I think that's words of wisdom right there. <laughs> <laughs> so Gavin, you've got a new tour coming yeah. up oh, on the horizon. On, on the horizon. horizon. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we're going to Europe with uh, Haken, who's nice. uh, an excellent, excellent uh, progressive rock titan group uh, from, uh, from, from England. Uh, we'll, we'll be going all over Europe with them. Oh, it's nice. going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. Um, they're you know, we, we got to know them when we opened for them in the States, and they're just excellent people, excellent musicians. How does that work when, when you're on the same tour? Do you, do you travel together? Do you travel separately? Well, in, in the, when we toured in, uh, here in the States, we all traveled in separate uh, vehicles. Uh, and, you know, hung out at all the venues, uh -huh. and, you know, got to know each other and, and, and had good times. But uh, uh, in Europe, we'll actually all be on the same bus. Which is going to be a first for for you know, it's it's little little baby bent knees first bus tour, <laughs> which is going to be exciting. You know, cause we're we're used to, you know, when we first started touring, we were in a Honda Odyssey minivan. Okay. Uh, and uh, for our first two tours, there were seven of us still. We we still had Phil, our our, our accordion player, okay. uh, with us. So seven people in a seven seat minivan, with uh, you know. Bunch of gear. Bunch of gear, you know, and then uh, uh, it, it, it came down to the six of us, and eventually we kind of, just due to having, due to the amount of merchandise we'd have to take with us and gear, we outgrew the minivan, jumped into a, 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 a Conaline van, and uh, uh, a combination of uh, a van accident and outgrowing that van uh, oh. is, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, you know, 
figuring that out. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be in the bus. How long will you will that tour go for? About a month. Uh, I believe yeah. it's February fifteenth through March sixteenth. And what's your impressions? Europe tour, U.S. tour. How do, how do they compare? It's well. I mean, on 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 the one. You've done it. You've toured Europe. Oh yeah, before, we, we've so. been to Europe before. Yeah, and it's it's. I will say it's it's. Uh, on one hand, it's way more novel being in in Europe because I, you know, it's an entirely different continent. Oh, yeah. You know, so so seeing all of these cities like you know Milan, Italy, and, and uh, various cities in Germany is great. Uh, the way that uh, the hospitality of the venues in in Europe is just amazing and. Uh, you know, always excellent food backstage, and the venues always, you know, treat us wonderfully. Not to say that American venues don't. Um, some don't. But, you know, that's that's just venues. Shocking, shocking. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, it's it's yeah, it's it's going to be lovely, and, and you know, being on a bus, that's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. How? Let me back up. Yes. How? So you've been to Europe before. Yeah. The first time you went. <laughs> What had to happen initially to set the whole thing up? Because I'm mm. thinking, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't know who to call. And then, how do I get how do I get my drums, or in my case, my keyboard? Yeah. How would I get? Do I have to rent something there? Do I have to ship it by boat? Or yeah. How did, well, how did the logistics work, and how do you make connections and connect dates together to make it workable? Well, the way that we got into Europe first was a, a, a festival in Germany uh, reached out to us okay. and, and wanted us. And it, and it was a, a, a fairly big... Uh, had they heard you from some other... Yeah, so we had... If, if memory, uh, so Shiny Eyed Babies, which was our, our second album, um, somehow started... It, it caught the ear of... Uh, I believe there was it was a German rock magazine that ended up writing about us. And people started talking about it a little bit and it, and it caught the the attention of uh, uh someone at, at, a, at a festival in, in germany uh the uh, Berg Hertzberg festival um and they invited us out and on the strength of you know we kind of used that as like an anchor date and yeah. uh we wound up working with a, a european booking agent to kind of flesh out uh a, a tour around that okay. um on the strength of you know hey this band is playing this festival and you know they can come to your city and yeah and, you know, uh, as for the gear, um, I had my snare and a uh, bass drum. No, I had my snare and cymbals, and I think a bass drum pedal with me. Uh, but we uh, backlined uh, gear at, at all the uh, uh, all, all the rest of the shows. We did. Is that common that they that they're able to do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and we did take our keyboard over. Uh, okay. And at at the first show, which was in front of. I, it, I, two thousand people at this festival. Uh, the first show, you know, we're our first European gig. You know, obviously the the, the power outlets are different, and we had. Uh, uh, long story short, the the way that we plugged the keyboard in turned out to be wrong, and at the end of the first song, the keyboard fried. Oh. And <laughs> so we're kind of you know, and it's a ninety minute set. Oh, and we're, we were one song in, and our keyboard, you know, the, uh. the keyboard's fried. So uh, luckily, the, the the person handling the backline for that festival happened to have uh, the exact same keyboard that Courtney uh, uh, used. Oh, nice. So, you know, we just kind of did this little improv jam uh, while <laughs> they set up this next keyboard, and, and luckily we got to, you know, do the rest of the show with, wow. with keyboard. What a story. Oh yeah, that was <laughs> that was frightening. That was frightening. Uh, you know, but but uh, I mean, and, and, and to, to speak back to um, the notion of band being family. Yes. Uh, it was, you know, yeah, it was it was frightening and like, oh, what are we gonna do? But also, I, I felt it, and I'm, I'm sure everyone else did that. This feeling of yeah, we can, you know, the six of us know each other so well on stage that yeah, we 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 could. Cover for this. We could, trust. We make, yeah, it's a trust. Like we're we're all gonna get through this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I mean, it, it was the best that they had. You know, that that, that that they had a keyboard. But if they didn't, you know, I still think we would have been able to make it through and have an entertaining show. But, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, the new tour yes. coming up. I'm gonna guess now. You have right now your your um, 
your release out is Land Animal. Yeah. yeah. So is there another recording coming out that you can, or is it too soon to speak about it? Well, uh, we, we do have another album in the can. It's being uh, mixed uh, uh, and stuff and having the finishing touches put on it. Uh, we don't have like a name for it yet or anything. Um, uh, but uh, it, it will be coming out sometime uh, this year, this 2019, um, and it's, it's, I mean, we're all, I suppose every band ha says this and kind of has to say this, but we're incredibly excited about it coming out. <laughs> well, you are. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and you know, I always say because, you know, I mean, people ask like, oh, what's what's your favorite of, of your albums? And, and I always maintain that if your most recent album is not your favorite of your work, then something is wrong. I remember David Crosby saying something about uh, your favorite song is the one you just wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because it, it uh, I think it would be kind of a weird place to be in if, if, you know, you put on a new album and go, yeah, well, this one's kind of good, but it doesn't beat, you know, our second album. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think that that's, you know, you, you want to you wanna get it to a place where this is, you know, representative of who you are now and... And, and what you're, you know, how much you've grown since the the, the, the last outing and, and stuff like that. But yeah. um, it's uh, it's this album is uh, uh, it's I, I don't know. It, it feels the songs on it feel very different from everything else. But yet I also think that it's uh, it's it's a very bent me album. I think in, in a lot of ways. So no alarming surprises then. <laughs> Maybe from a, from a material standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it could be our. Uh, 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 I was trying to think of a weird departure album, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. <laughs> it's, but you know, being in the studio is, is. Well, your fans will be happy about that. Thank you. <laughs> you Absolutely. Know. Oh yeah, and you know, we love being in the studio. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, we, we we can kind of endlessly play around with sounds and, and we, we kind of have to uh, uh, put, put kind of limits on ourselves sometimes of, of where it's like you know all right we've you know we we we've been messing with uh, or you know G Gavin you've done 10 takes of, of this film one of these is is going to be you know excellent. <laughs> you don't have to you know <laughs> well that's you, you bring up an interesting point which is Creation, the process of creating something, from, especially from scratch, like mm -hmm. you are, there, there really exists the possibility that it could go on forever. Yeah. That you could yeah. never say, okay, we're done, right? How, how do you address that in Bent Knee? Well, um, well, you know, there's that saying, and I forgot who said it, that, that great art is never finished, only abandoned. <laughs> Uh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, it, uh, it's, it's, I, I think with everything, there's, you can kind of keep playing with, with the details and keep tweaking things or, you know, uh, adding layers or overdubbing things and, you know, oh, if I, you know, do this or that or, or, or what if I used this snare instead of this other one or, you know, that, that. That, that crash symbol is a little too high, you know, th things like that. Uh, at, at a certain point, you just kind of have to trust that what you have is, is great. I know that when I'm writing and recording on my own, I can get lost for an hour in just like a delay trail. <laughs> and then as a result, I spend an hour or two just doing that, and then I get burned out, and then I close that song file and just never go back to it and then have, you know, yeah. just folders and folders and hard drives of stuff that, you know, just don't, it hasn't been released yet because it's, you know, the delay trail isn't right, <laughs> you know, but, but I, I think that, uh, being that there's six of us in, oh. in Bent Me and... Oh, this hits home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're talking about this. Yeah. This is... This, I, we all wrestle with this. Oh, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Not, this is not confined to music. No. This is any kind of act of creativity. It's oh, like, yeah. When is, when is it done? Exactly. And I think Cause it's... Because, you know, there's people out there, like me, in this yeah. case, I want, I'm, I'm ready to hear whatever you've got right now. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, and, and I think the... the <laughs> Don't the, make me wait another year. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the biggest example of this is, you look at George Lucas and, and what he did with Star Wars, right? And... and 
you know, going back to films, you know, he started in 97 where he was tweaking, tweaking things and, and something that was ostensibly finished and he just yeah. keeps, you know, and, and now they're these weird, <laughs> weird <laughs> things. Yeah, you know, so it's, I think that's the, the, the best argument for getting something to a point where you know that the, the point of it is is delivered and it, it says what it wants to say and you are happy with the way that it says it and the way that it sounds and then you you just kind of put it out and then you you know move to the to the next thing love it you know it's it. it's uh i mean we can't all be what was it boston where they they spent uh like two years on that first album just in the studio tinkering and and it's you know it sounds amazing, but yeah, you know yeah. we can't all do that. No, no. <laughs> they were they had full time jobs, I believe, didn't they? Oh wow, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, life catches up and, and infuses reality into the into the situation too. Oh, definitely. It's like, all right, let's get on with this. Definitely, because <laughs> you know I I broke my uh, my leg on our summer 2018 tour just at Man. at the San Francisco show. Oh. And you know, took a step off stage and didn't get my foot on the step. Went down, toes pointing the wrong direction, you know. Um, and yeah, that really kind of, you know, like yeah, one second you could uh, not be on the tour anymore. Yeah. You know, or wow. you could, uh, you know, yeah. So it's yeah, yeah. There you go. It's important. Oh yeah. Gavin, I want to thank you so much for taking time out. And thank you. Time out of your tour and spending some time sharing it with us. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. BentKneeMusic.com, everybody. Check them out.